Hey everyone, good evening. Tonight we are going to talk about Wool and the Gang Al Pacino Merino, one of the most beautiful yarns I have ever knit with, and that's no joke. I'm Ellen Lewis from Crazy For You, and I am so glad that you are here with me tonight. If you are new to my channel, please hit subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up or share it with your friends or both. Give it a comment. So the thing that I know now, which is very cool, is if you hit click subscribe, you get a little sparkly button, um, which is kind of new. So I think that's very, very fun. Anyway, so um, talking about Al Pacino Merino. It's from a, a yarn line um, in Great Britain called Wool and the Gang. And I'm sure you have seen their stuff. They're very active on social media and they're, I call them the cool kids of the yarn world. Their vibe is very young and fresh and their designs are, are very hip and everything is just a little bit, you know, playful, sarcastic, edgy, super, super cute. And it would be a mistake to underestimate their yarns as kid yarn or something that's not so fabulous. And tonight I want to share with you Al Pacino Merino, which is just one of the yarns in their line, but I think you're absolutely going to love it. My goodness. Let's see. Hi, Jal. Hey, Gwen. Hi, Donna. Hi, Rita. I'm so glad you guys are here. So um, Al Pacino Merino it comes in a hundred gram ball. This is not a hundred gram ball because I've been swatching it like crazy. And, but it is absolutely beautiful. So let's, let's get down to the basics. It is a bulky weight. It is 109 yards per hundred gram ball. And it is a blend of 60% Merino and 40% Alpaca, which is lovely. So you have in there, so you have the alpaca, which is so soft and silky and light and warm and cozy. And, and then you have the wool in there, the merino, which is also very lustrous and very silky. And the two of them together make a great team. And here's why. The alpaca, as I said, is very soft and very cozy, but it doesn't have that much structure. As you know, if you've ever knit anything in 100% alpaca. So blending it with the merino gives it a beautiful structure and elasticity that the alpaca by itself doesn't have. Oh my goodness, lots of people joining us. Hi, 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 hi. Hey, Amelia, hey, Polly, hey, Ronnie, and Colleen, and Amy. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to have you. So, um, if you have knit with this before, tell me. I think it's a pretty new yarn. It is new to us this season, okay? And I will tell you honestly, Whitney loves this yarn. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. We are, we are looking to bring in the next generation of knitters, right? Am I right? Okay, we all want our daughters and granddaughters and nieces to, and nephews or whatever, to take up the craft but they are looking for something a little more, a little more edgy, a little more hip. Like I said, this company's vibe is very much that, but their yarns are serious, no kidding quality stuff. So that's, um, that's how I feel about it. And I'm going to be sharing with you some of the designs that they have for their yarn, but mostly I'm going to be showing you some of the designs that are not their recommended patterns or patterns that they designed, but patterns that would be beautiful in this yarn that I think most of us of a certain age would enjoy wearing more than maybe some of the edgier stuff. Okay, does that sound good? Okie doke. All right, hi Liz, hey Barbara. Oh, so here it is. And let me just give you my first impressions on this yarn. It is delicious to knit with. It is ice cream and filet mignon and bernays and heavy cream and all of the things that are delicious and wonderful kind of all rolled up into one. Um, it is so silky and smooth in the hand. 
and the fabric is just smooshy and plushy and absolutely wonderful. And I have knitted it at several gauges, as I always do, and I can't wait to show them to you. So let me go ahead and put this camera on so you can see. Okay, so here are the different gauges. So I had a chance to do quite a few, as you can see. So we will start down at the bottom. The recommended gauge for this yarn is 13 stitches over four inches on a 10 and a half. So I started it on an eight just to see how it was going. So I don't think I could have gotten it any tighter on a smaller needle. Um, I could maybe have gotten a little bit tighter and more stitches on a seven, but I think it would have been miserable. I will tell you that even knitting it at this tight a gauge, which is usually not a treat to knit something too tightly, even at this gauge, it was really a pleasant, pleasant knit. Um, on an eight, this is 16 stitches over four inches. Can you see how beautiful the stitch definition is? Really great stitch definition. Um, the stitches are nice and, and balanced, straight up and down. It's a two ply, right? So you can see that it's a two ply yarn if we pull it apart. But even so, I think the stitches look really, really balanced and very, very pretty. So great stitch definition. And at this gauge, this is a sturdy gauge, but not a stiff gauge. This is the gauge I would use if I were making mittens, and they'd be beautiful mittens, or maybe a hat or um, a gaiter or something if you wanted a little, a little structure in it. If you were going to make a, um, a cardigan or a jacket that you wanted to be nice and warm, this would be a perfect gauge for it. 16 stitches over four inches. So really nice there. All right, this next one is, I mean, and we're just going up one, one by one. This is the same yarn at um, 17. So pretty, still plushy, still um, has plenty of structure. And this is, so, 16, 15, 14. This is a very nice sweater gauge. For those of you who like your sweaters um, maybe a little more structured, this is, it's not stiff, but it, it definitely still has some structure and it's a lovely, lovely fabric. And then this is the yarn at their recommended gauge. So you can see that it, it has enough structure, but not too much. It's, you know, kind of the baby bear of the gauge here. Um, it's just right, you know? And then always I am going to push it. This is, so this is on the next size needle up and it's pretty. It's a little more open. It's getting to where you can sort of put your finger through the stitches. And then here it is on, this is a 13. So let's just go ahead and measure this gauge. So this right here, their recommended gauge, I got on a 10 and a half, okay? This was on an 11. So this, if you were gonna do an Emma, which, you know, I'm always looking for things to do Emma with. If you were gonna do an Emma, this would be the gauge that you would get. And I think it would be very nice. This is on a 13, and I didn't measure this yet. So let's go ahead and measure that and see what we've got. So this is 11 stitches. 
Mm, one, two, three, four, five mm, and a half. So five and a half stitches over two inches is 11 stitches. And I was in the process of swatching it a little more on a US 15 where I think it would begin to fall apart. I think it would really begin to lose its structural integrity here. Um, this, is, this is pretty loose. I mean, it's doable, it's light. If that's um, the fabric that you're going for, it absolutely would work for you. But remember that when you, when you push the gauge and you, you knit things a little more loosely, they are, they lack the structural integrity and they tend to stretch out. I was reading some of the comments on Ravelry for some of the garments that had been knit in this. And they said, if you use wool in the gang, remember that it will stretch out. But she was using it on a very big needle. And remember that when you are knitting very loosely, that fabric is prone to stretching. So it's, it's prone to stretching. It's also prone to a little more pilling than a fabric that's knit more tightly. So there's that. So I just want to turn this sideways so that you can see how the different, how it looks from side to side. So So the different, different gauges really give it a completely different look in the fabric. And I have not blocked this yet. I do not anticipate that it would change gauge much down here, especially in the, you know, this, this tighter area. Um, but I can definitely see that if you were to wash and soak the yarn and in a garment, it might stretch out a bit. So my recommendation on this would be um, if you were going to do it at a looser gauge, you would definitely want to use a pattern that had some other means of support like seams or whatever, at least provide some kind of a seam after the fact um, in it. So that is the yarn. Like I said, it is a, a two-ply yarn. It comes in so many beautiful colors and it is just dreamy to knit with. Um, uh, in the knitting on it, I did not have any problems with it being um, splitty or, you know, there was just nothing unpleasant about it at all. Because I was doing so many different gauges, I had all the needles out and I knit some of it on an Addy Turbo needle, some of it I knit on a bamboo needle, some of it I knit on a Chowgu red lace, which is very, very pointy. Some of it I knit on a Rowan, um, a Rowan needle. And I, I think for yarn that's as beautiful and lofty as this, and I tend to believe this for most bulky yarns, you're better off with a less pointy tip because it's going to slide between the fibers of the yarn. I mean, yeah. It's not going to go into the fibers. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to split your fabric. It's going to go into the stitch rather than through the fibers. So that's, that's just for me. I mean, I know everybody loves their own kind of needle and has their own preference on that. But if you find that, that a, a yarn like this, a very lofty yarn is um, being splitty, try a needle that's a little less pointy. So just a thought. Okay, so who's ready to see the patterns? What are your thoughts so far on this? Tell me in the chat how you like the, the look of this yarn. All right. Okay, so this is an example of um, one of the designs from Wool and the Gang. I think it's cute. This is one of the sort of less um, out there designs, but you know, it's, it's very cute. It's very oversized. They have a lot of big color blocking. Let me see. I may come back to that, but yeah, you can definitely see that. So I did want to share with you some of the designs that I thought would be super cute for this yarn. Let's see. 
I love it, but I don't like knitting on large needles. Okay, so what do you consider large needles, Polly? Because this is on like a 10 and a half, which to me is definitely a doable, um, a doable size. One of the things I wanted to point out is it's at the exact gauge of Rowan Cocoon. So if you have any patterns that you loved for Rowan Cocoon, it would be absolutely perfect for that. Um, some other yarns that it's similar to in texture and weight, but I will tell you it's much, much nicer than those, are um, Plymouth Baby Alpaca Grande and um, Misty Alpaca Chunky. So it's similar, if you've seen those, it's similar in um, weight to those, but the feel of it is so much nicer. You don't have any kinds of little guard hair on it. There's no hairy quality. In fact, let me show you up close what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is the yarn. Can you see how incredibly smooth? I mean, it's just so smooth. Even up close, you know, sometimes you can see when you get this close to a yarn, it can read a little bit hairy, but it is not. It is super, super smooth. All right. Would that be excessively warm? Okay, we do know that alpaca is six times warmer than wool. So a 100% alpaca garment is very hard to wear in our climate. Plus, it doesn't have the structure to kind of hold its shape. But I think the blend like this would make it more wearable. Bulky yarns are warmer than lighter weight yarns. We know that. Um, so this, even if we were looking at this yarn as compared to a finer weight yarn that has the same fiber composition like Alpaca Soft DK, this is going to be warmer simply because of the, the fact that it's a bulky yarn. So it's, it's probably not a yarn that you're going to get, um, a lot of wear out of if you live in Texas or, you know, Southern Mississippi or, um, you know, places where it's very warm all the time, but it's definitely something that you could knit a, an outer garment and use it instead of a coat in some of those kinds of climates. If it ever gets below, I don't know, 50, 60, I don't know. It was pretty chilly today here and I don't know, my blood's just gotten thin, but I was really cold. It was like 50 degrees and I was ready for a coat, ready for something in alpaca and wool. All right, let's see, Polly. I like five to eight, but I knit loose enough. Yeah. Okay. So you would probably need to knit this on, on a size eight needle, Polly. If you knit very loosely, you would want to go down. So because you're looking for a gauge of 13 stitches over four inches, but you know, it's, it's everybody's different, right? That's why I don't say typically what size needle I use to get the gauge of the different swatch sections, because it doesn't matter what size needle I, I use. It matters what the actual stitch count is. Okay. All right. Love to see the colors. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll bring up the colors for you. Let's see. Here we go. They are, they are really very pretty. And there's some very fun... Um, very fun colors. All right, so I'll share this with you. All right, so these are the colors. <laughs> Starts with that gorgeous hot pink. We have a, kind of a, a cameo pink. This color that I'm using right now, it's called chestnut brown, baby blue, um, eucalyptus gorgeous off-white. Look at that. Is that just the most beautiful pistachio ice cream color ever? This is really pretty. The purple, navy. This is kind of a, um, a rose color. They call it cameo rose. Very pretty. There's a gray, a soft gray. This is um, a little more intense than the, than the white. We have a black charcoal, very pretty green, and lilac. And 
look at this. Isn't this fun? This is a black and white marl. Um, that would be a very fun accessory, I think. Yeah, so. Okay, so those are the colors. Let's see. Looks warm and cozy. Yes, absolutely warm and cozy. Like I said, it would be great mittens. Uh, cornflower blue, please. Yes, they're all lovely. So lovely. Um, yeah, so, okay. So let's look at some of the, the designs that I picked. So this is, this is Tundra by Nora Gawn. Very pretty. I think the stitch definition that this yarn gives you would really showcase the stitch work in this yoke design by Nora Gawn. And it's sort of interesting, this time, instead of just looking at sweaters, I've also pulled some accessories because I think even if you do live in a place where it's too warm or you run hot or whatever, this yarn is a yarn that I would recommend for accessories as well because it is so chunky and it is so warm. So you'll see some accessories slipped in here too. All right, this is Carbath, which we've seen before, very pretty. Um, Possibly not the best design if you're very bulky, but it is a beautiful, I mean, if you're very busty, <laughs> it's cute, but you know, it does put a lot of emphasis on your bust. And if that's not something you want, this might not be the right sweater for you, but it is a very, very cute design. Um, big Iceberg, very cute by um, Von Hinternstein. You know, she always designed, my dog is just shaking his head. <laughs> she always designs in the round, top down, you know, contiguous pieces. I think this is a very pretty one. And it is at one of the chunk, one of the less chunkier gauges. So this is at 16. So this would be at the gauge of the tightest of the yarn of the swatches that I showed you. As is Carbath. 14 stitches. Okay, my mistake. Okay, this is really cute. Where is Whitney when I need her? Um, just a fun, cozy, warm little um, balclava. When it gets cold, this is exactly what you want. And this would be beautiful in this yarn. Yes, Amelia, that black and white would be perfect for accessories. Donna loves it. <laughs> she loves the wild things. So I love that. So hooded neck warmer, that would be cute in there. Astoria, this is worked at a gauge of 15. This would be a great use of this yarn because it would keep you nice and cozy without feeling bulky or whatever. Um, you could wear it over, a, you know, over, like as she's done here, over a smooth um, long sleeved blouse or, or turtleneck, or you could wear it over, you know, a crisp white woven blouse. But I think that's very pretty by my favorite Shelly Anderson. Um, this is at 14. I like this. This is um, Cookie the Knitter. I am not familiar with her stuff, but I do love these stripes here. I think this is a great look. And I've been threatening to knit a, a striped sweater for forever but I thought that's cute. And that is at 14. Triton, um, as you guys know, I've knit two Tritons. This is a bulky sweater and this would be absolutely beautiful in this. And I'm tempted to knit yet a third Triton in this yarn because it is so fabulous. Um, yeah, perfect. 14 stitches. So that would be a really nice, fabric and a nice project for this yarn. Haven, now this is just a scarf by Kim Hargreaves, but you could do any kind of lacy little pattern with this yarn. I think there's something really nice about lace in a chunky yarn. There's something about the delicacy of the yarn that's offset by the, but the delicacy of the stitch pattern that's offset by the chunkiness of the yarn which is really, really kind of nice. I like this too. This is just a basic 
um, jumper, basic pullover with the puff cuff. Very cute. And this would be pretty in this. Look how rich those colors are. It would show off the rich saturated colors of the um, Al Pacino. And I don't know why, but I love this one so much. It's just adorable. It's a vest. It's a little top. It would be so cute. And I just thought this was adorable with the little kitty cat on it. For anybody who loves kitty cats, you could do it with, um, you know, white as the background and make a kitty cat black or, you know, whatever you wanted to do. That would be just so fun. And I'd love that. Oops. I'm not signed in. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. Another one by Shelly Anderson is Mitra, and this is worked at um, 14 stitches over four inches. And this is a beautiful cardigan with a deep rib. It's just a lovely design. And it would be very pretty in this. Kitty. Okay, what is that pattern? Does, do you mean the kitty cat pattern? Let's have a look. That one is called Curiosity. I love it. Curiosity killed the cat. Okay, well, we'll have to go back to those that I am not signed in. Maybe I'll just sign in. Okay, hang on. Hang on while I sign in here. Okay. Yes. Good, good. Okay. So this is one of the ones that we didn't see when I wasn't signed in. I don't know what it is about this, but I really like it. Um, this is, it's just a shawl, but I love the ruffle in there. And I think it would be so pretty in this, and it would definitely be a fun thing to knit. The gauge on this, she doesn't say the gauge on this, but on a US 9, and I know she's used um, Misty Alpaca Chunky, I know that it would work. So I like that one very much. This is the other one. This is cute, and we have done this in the shop. I think Ginny made one. A very cute little accessory. Um, it, it wouldn't take but two skeins. And it's just enough to go around your neck. And since this yarn feels so nice, that's something that you might want to use this yarn for. So you could just indulge in having the feel of that right around your neck because it's not the least bit itchy. Just so pretty. Okay, Here's another. This is just a big color block shawl. Easy to make. And this would be fun because there are so many different colors of this yarn. Another shawl. This is nice. I like this because it has these reversible cables, which are fun to knit and just a very smooshy, pretty accessory. That would be, you know, if you do live in a warm area, this would definitely be enough to suit for a, a coat. Yes, you could definitely wear that where you are with the short sleeves, Donna. Okay. Again, another by Bon Hinter and Stein. Very cute um, vest. I think this would make a great vest. 12 stitches. Okay, so that would be very cute. That would be perfect for this yarn. And then any of you who did any of the magnolias with Camilla Vad, this is the gauge. This, this sweater would look very pretty with the, um, that motif at the bottom. I think that would be very nice. And you could do this and wear it if it's if you don't like long sleeves, but you know, you could make the sleeve as long as you like. Now, this is sort of a fantasy garment. I don't know that anybody's going to knit this in this yarn, but isn't it just lovely? This I've I've shown you this pattern before. I think it is just stunning. Little red riding hood. And it does come in a beautiful red, so there's that. I have knit this garment and I love it. It's the Half and Half Cowl by Church Mouse. And it is just really fun to, to work. It's a great learning experience. You're working in um, 
in ribbing and part of it is open and worked flat and part of it is worked in the round and it has a tubular cast on and a tubular bind off. So very, very fun to knit and it would make a great um, project for this. Yes, I can see you wearing that red riding hood. Um, another easy, easy wrap at this gauge. Ever popular Emma. You know, I mentioned the cocoa knits. This would be a great yarn for any cocoa knit that you wanted to do. Um, pretty blanket scarf. This would be very fun to work. It looks like a really challenging pattern, but it's not. It's, you know, it's memorizable and you can sort of see how the, the stitches are going, which is a very nice feature. And then for those of you Outlander fans, um, this is a pattern inspired by, by Claire. Do I have any Outlander fans? I know she has a new, um, they have a new episode or series or whatever dropping soon. A basic design, just a really pretty basic cardigan by Amy Christoffers. I think this would be lovely in that pattern, in that yarn. Here's an idea. I'm maybe not this color so much, but look how elegant that is. This would be just what you need if you, um, you know, you want to cover up that spot between the uh, collar of your coat and your neck. This would be very cozy wonderful thing to make. Very pretty, right? It's, it's what um, what they used to call kind of a dicky. Um, Arna and Carlos were talking about it. I think this is, this is pretty. It looks great on her. Uh, this. Isn't this cute? A take on the vest, a little hooded vest. Very cute. Very, um, I don't know, playful. I like that a lot. That's something I can see my daughter wearing. And this, of course, I have knit this. It's a beautiful pattern by um, Hohi Locatelli. It's a drop shoulder with a lot of ease. And this would be a perfect yarn to knit the easy bulky one in. I like this pattern a lot. And mine I wear all the time. And I would knit it again in this yarn. Ursa, also at this gauge, very cute cropped look, all in one piece. This is a wonderful, um, very size inclusive pattern, and I love her stuff. And if you were to go to um, her page, I'm sure you would find many other garments um, that would work with this yarn because she does tend to work in the bulkier gauges for her designs. Not always, but a lot. All right, this is a design. I typically do not recommend a drops designs because I think they're very hard to follow. Um, but I knit this and it is a wonderful garment and it would be beautiful in this yarn. Silver Haze, it's a free pattern if you wanna have a look at it. Every, all of the um, measurements and such are in centimeters. So you have to recalibrate all of those, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, this is a very cute design and it would be lovely in this, in this yarn. Now, I think this might be intended for a slightly bulkier yarn, um, 11 stitches. It start, that's the, this gauge right, kind of right here where we were sort of beginning to fall apart, but it is, it is loose. And then this, this is reminiscent of the designs that, um, it's not this, this, reminiscent of the designs that Wool and the Gang has put out for this yarn. Very color blocked, um, cropped, oversized, very cute. So this kind of gives you a sense of what I think the company had in mind for this yarn. 
And then this is this is pretty. I don't know that I would necessarily um, recommend this for it, but I just thought I'd show you since I do know this pattern. It is knit on a size 15. I did this version in the brushed fleece. You would be getting a very open and drapey fabric. And if that's something that you like, I can vouch for the quality of this pattern. It's a very nice design. And again, this is sort of on the edge, a little iffy. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern, um, but you would be knitting it at the gauge where the, the yarn is beginning to kind of lose its, its structural integrity there. But I think this is a pretty, a pretty pattern, and if you like it, um, you could make it work. And it wouldn't matter if it's stretched out because it's just a shawl. So what do you think? Um, what do you think about the yarn? Are there any patterns that you like? Go ahead and tell me in the chat. If you're watching this later, put in the, in the comments which designs you like or you think you might like to make or which ones appealed to you. Any that you hated, tell me that too. I'm always happy to hear your comments, positive or negative, and I get plenty of both. <laughs> So, okay, well, that is Al Pacino Merino by Wool and the Gang. If you are not already subscribed, please click that subscribe button so that you can see the little sparkle. And I will be with you next week. And until then, knit fun, wear fab. Talk to you soon. Bye.